Today is Tuesday, January 24th, 2023, 3 p.m. Uh, we'll call the Committee on the Environment, Climate, and Legacy to order. And uh, what we have today on our agenda is three bills. Um, let's see, and now we do have quorum. Uh, three bills, starting with uh, Senator Schwazinski, Senator Fowl. One nine three, Senator. Thank you, Senator or Chairman or yeah, um, <laughs> Chair. Thank it's you. good to be back. This was I was on this committee for six years, so it's fun to see the faces. Uh, so this bill might be the quickest bill ever to go through committee. Basically, what it it does is it gives service members who um, are non-residents their spouses the. Um, to have fishing licenses that are non-resident fishing licenses, the opportunity to procure them. So it, um, it saves a, a, a military family. Um, rather than getting a $51 fishing license, they can get a $25 fishing license so that when the, um, the, the spouse is on leave and they want to relax and do what Minnesotans do, they can go fishing and do it as, at the resident rate of, um, for the expense. And that's well, it. That's pretty much the sum of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, any questions? Any question like, from? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Any question from members? Yes, Senator Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, just looking at this, I'm generally in support. Obviously, uh, what, <laughs> paragraph B, line one, one, one. Starting at the end, it says the Armed Forces of the United States, obviously. The National Guard is the Armed Forces of the United States. There's they're, a, they're included. So if you're, if you're in the National Guard entirely, you're, you and your spouse? If the, you're a non-resident. If you are non-Minnesotan residing in Minnesota, you get the resident license. Senator Lane. So, Mr. Chair. I sir. might rely on the DNR at this okay. point. So let, let me clarify the question. Yes, thank you, Senator Lane. <laughs> There's 11,000 armed uh, service members in the state of Minnesota, give or take, at any given point in time. Uh, if there's, is that 25 times, I don't know, what, 75% of the armed? It would. Um, I, thank that, you, Mr. Chair. I've got uh, the expense for the program would be five grand. Right, that seems cheap. That's my point. <laughs> Senator Lane. No. Um, I wouldn't question <laughs> Senator Lang. I'm sorry. Uh, Senator, um, yeah, uh, I, both Senator, maybe uh, sorry. see if DNR want to come and explain that. And uh, please state your name uh, for, for the record. Mr. Chair, members of the record, my name is Pat Rivers. I'm Deputy Director for the Division of Fish and Wildlife. And for the purposes of fiscal note, we did not consider the National Guard as part of the active military. Uh, so that is an assumption that we made um, as we filled out our fiscal note. Based on that, we had 580 active military. A uh, National Guard would increase the cost of the of the bill. Is that, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Questions so, I, and I guess maybe it, then, it, then it's a wording difference for what the attention of the bill is supposed to be. Again, which I'm supportive of, but it's it's fairly distinctive on which is which. When you say Armed Forces of the United States, that includes the National Guard. It all, the, the Air Guard, it includes the Navy Reserves that we have at Snelling. All those folks are the armed service of the U.S. So if you, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Mr. River? Mr. River? Mr. Chair, respond? Senator, like, I, do, I do see what you're saying. It would have a much larger fiscal note if, indeed, uh, we include the National Guard. You said there was about 12,000, I believe, uh, National yeah. Guard. Uh, we estimated that about 50% of the active military are non-resident. So we could uh, update the fiscal note and get that back to the committee. So, uh, sorry to keep uh, Senator Lane. Sorry to keep you know moving this on, but so are we talking about active duty military? That's the intention of the bill: active duty military only that are on leave in the state of Minnesota. Correct. Because that's very that's prescriptive that the bill doesn't say that. Senator Shawasinski. But thank you, Mr. Chair. I I would entertain that amendment if you if we can work together. Um, to include all active service members as you see the definition. 
And Senator Lane. Before we go further, uh, Senators and uh, Mr. River, maybe we can hear from uh, a little explanation from fiscal uh, Mr. Mueller explaining whether we want to make that change or not. Go ahead, Mr. Mueller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chairman and members, um, the fiscal note does just address, as the, as the DNR um, said, just active military members stationed in Minnesota, and they assume like 580. If it's that small, the, the amount of revenue that's between the resident and non-resident license is kind of a wash. It's pretty small. The, the $5,000 cost was just going to be for the DNR to program some of this into their licensing system. If we go down and go to all active members, including the reserves, yes, we'll have to have the DNR do a new fiscal note on it. There would be some cost to the game fish fund just in lost revenue. Um, I wouldn't want to guess right now how much, but I don't think it's going to be very, very large. I mean, it'll be some, it'll be trackable amount of money. So, and uh, like I said, we would have to have the DNR go back and, and do a new estimate on it, but I think we could um, certainly get that done and depending on how long they think it would take. I, Senator Light. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. I think maybe, um, maybe Senator Solzinski could give us the intent of the bill and then we could draft the language to follow or what the amendment might look like. And if the intent is to include the National Guard, then to, to specify that, or if the intent is active duty on, on, leave, on leave status, then, then do that. Mr. River and... Yeah. Mr. Chair, Senator Lang, I think we need to look at that fiscal note on including all of the National Guard members. Okay. The current <laughs> fiscal note, as stated, is about $6,000 to the Game and Fish Fund, which is something it's not positive to the Game and Fish Fund, but something that is is worthy of pursuing. Okay. A larger impact to the Game and Fish Fund, we'd like to take a look at that. Okay. And, and, and uh, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And my intent was simply um, to military men and women that are stationed in Minnesota that are not residents of Minnesota, that when they go and relax for the weekend that their spouses would be eligible for a resident fishing license. So that was what my goal was in the grand scheme of things. So when they want to go get some R&R on weekends, they, because they were stationed here, they would be treated as residents. Thank you, Senator uh, Schwarzenski. Uh, you know, I have um, an idea or one option. We can spend this time, you know, yeah. maybe put the bill on the table and then draft quickly and then uh, approved by this, this committee or this bill will be laid over for possible inclusion. And when we do that, it may not come to this committee anymore. It may go to the floor as possible inclusion. We can work on the language then. Uh, Senator Lay, which, which, which one do you want? Do you want possible inclusion or do you want to <laughs> work? Senator Schwarzenski. <laughs> what? I'd like to work with Senator Lang okay. and get this perfect. All right. Um, let's go to Senator Wiesenberg first. Go ahead, Senator Wiesenberg. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I did notice on line 1.8, it says the commissioner may issue a resident license to take a crossed off fish. It just says game. It, this is just for fishing, correct? So I, is that an error? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, members, um, you'll see that in on the line that Senator Wiesenberg is talking about, the word fish is stricken out because the entire uh, language that is dealing with angling is now moved to paragraph B. So now you just have two different paragraphs, one dealing with uh, game and one dealing with fish. And so that's why they're separated. As to the earlier question about the definition of armed forces, I can say, Mr. Chair, that this is referred to differently in different subdivisions of this statute. And one thing that you could do if the author wanted to is you could do an oral amendment today and then that would sort of preserve the intent of this bill and then when it's laid over, as you all discussed, we could continue to work on the language because if you want to include the National Guard in this bill, it's actually a different subdivision that would need to be amended. Senator, uh, Senator Solarsinski. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Lang. 
any I, I think that's a, uh, probably a good step and uh, if there is something you know we're taking committee time on the easiest bill you were gonna have already so uh, <laughs> yeah. I got two minutes tops. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, well but yeah, if, if you'd like to do that, Mr. Stanley, uh, if we could get the oral amendment, and then I think we'll give you a, a good vote on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Let's, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Stanley, Mr. Uh, make an oral amendment, and one of the member here had to make a motion to, for us to accept. Or I can do it, too, as well. Go ahead. Stanley, with the oral amendment. So I believe you'd want to add National Guard on both lines 1.8 and 1.12. So the motion would be on page one, line eight, after forces, insert, comma, including the National Guard, comma, and to make the same change on page one, line 12. Stanley. Mr. Chair, I would make that uh, motion at this time. Okay. I'll approve Senator Lane's uh, motion. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion prevail. All right. Thank Senator you, Sorsinski. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, committee. I, I, I do have another question. Oh, oh uh, yes. Uh, Senator Wiesenberg. Uh, two minutes. <laughs> thank you, Chair. You're not done yet. So, um, I, I guess I had a question when I read this. It says obtain. I'm guessing it means purchase, not to give freely, correct? It, um, can, you re can you refer to the line? Oh, I'm sorry, like 1.2, a bill for an act relating to natural resources allowing a non-resident military, military spouse to obtain resident angling license. I'm, I, um, the intent is to be able to purchase at the cost of a Minnesota resident, correct? Correct. correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, Sounds good, then um, we will lay okay. this bill, this bill, Senate File 193, as amended, will be laid over for possible inclusion. All right, next bill is Senate File 31, uh, thir Senate File 31, Senator Jasinski. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. I just want to and make sure you don't get my name mixed up with the former senator. I, it was up here, so you'll do a great job, I know. I'm, you know, and my apologize in advance, uh, Senator Jasinski. I, you know, anything that little three three syllable, I, I'm a little tongue twist <laughs> on that. So pardon me if I uh, <laughs> miss miss folks uh, folks name. But yep, welcome, uh, Senator Jasinski. And uh, for members, uh, I appreciate if you slow down your remark and raise your hand first before. Uh, you, you speak. Right. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And actually, you do better with my name than most people, so thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we have Senate file number 31 in front of us. Uh, this was a bill that was heard last year. It really is just a modernization of some statutes for snowmobiling. Uh, there's three main issues it addresses. Uh, one, if, if you're familiar with a snowmobile, uh, in the past years, you've always had to have registration numbers that are painted on or decals. Uh, I've been working with the DNR, and we're working on a, a one sticker, so it actually is the, the registration and a number on it, so it, you, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't need the duplication of having both numbers and a decal. So the, the decal will have the numbers on it, uh, so it's kind of just modernizing that. Uh, the second one is uh, transferring some ownership and changing it from the registered owner to the current owner, which I'll have our testifiers explain the detail of that. And then the third item in there is uh, because of recently with some new design on, on roads, uh, when it comes to a roundabout, it causes some issues with what's allowed by law for, for crossing that, so it just modernizes it and uh, deems it up to the uh, location approved by the road authority, which would be the MnDOT or whoever uh, has jurisdiction over that road. So pre three pretty simple things. With that, I'll turn it over to my testifiers and we'll go from there. Sounds good. Uh, please introduce yourself uh, for the record. Hello, my name is Christian Franzen. I'm a contract lobbyist from the, for the Minnesota United Snowmobilers Association. And I'm Terry Hutchinson. I'm here representing the Minnesota United Snowmobile Association. Okay, thank you, and you may testify. Okay, I will go through um, some of the stuff that was, was put in here. Um, I want to make it... Um, 
clear that we have worked on this uh, prior sessions. It moved through committee. Um, we have worked with the DNR and all interested parties in the language, um, and there has not been um, any sort of confusion or whatnot up to this point. Uh, the first portion that I'd like to talk about is the uh, owner and transfer fee. Uh, actually, Terry, could you help me with this one? And actually, before I go any further, actually, to get to this point, I actually have an author's amendment. It's the oh. A1 amendment that addresses this issue. So if I could offer the A1, which is an author's amendment, please. Yes. Uh, yes, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, member. Okay. Uh, someone in the committee has to make that motion. Senator Hoffman? Okay. Uh, Senator Hoffman moved that the A1 amendment um, it will, it's a, will be amended to Senate 531. All approved say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Okay. Motion prevail. Okay. Uh, back to Senate 531. Uh, Senator Jasinski as amended. Yeah, um, as far as the registration decal and the numbers, um, just to give you an idea, there's 26 states in the United States that have snowmobiling. We're one of two that still require numbers on them. Wisconsin and many others in the last five years are doing the same thing that we've proposed. It's just a nuisance to have those numbers. Um, the way sleds are designed now with the decals and trying to make them pretty, there's no place to put those numbers. And working with the DNR, it just seems a whole lot better to just have a decal. It'll be similar to what's on your boat. It'll be the same size, four inches by four inches. It'll have everything on there that's needed. Um, talking with the DNR officers and the sheriffs, they can't see those numbers till they stop the vehicle anyway. And we thought originally, back when numbers were put on sleds, it helped track stolen and, and theft. And it really doesn't because nobody tracks that. If a sheriff takes a stolen report and doesn't forward it to the DNR or other places, it's not even there. So the only way you find it is to actually stop the vehicle and ID the serial number. So there's just no, no reason to have these numbers on them at all. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Hutchison and members. Any question to the testifier, Senator uh, Kunish? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President. Oh my gosh, Mr. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. You got a promotion, huh? <laughs> oh my goodness, I think my cold medicine is going Kunish. to my head. Um, so in this bill, it states that um, the change specifies that the current owner of the vehicle as opposed to the registered owner must apply for the transfer of the purchaser. So can you give me a scenario or can you clarify what is the current owner of the vehicle? So is that like I'm the owner of my vehicle um, and why, it, and is it because the registration hasn't transferred or how, how is there a current owner and a registered owner? Um, Senator Jasinski or Mr. Hutchison? Yes, um, what is, is happening out there is people are, are uh, like dealers and other motorsports places. They maybe get a snowmobile in that's a total loss, but it's got a really good engine in it yet. And then maybe two months later, another snowmobile comes in and the engine's bad. So they combine these things into, into one vehicle and who knows who owned it. The registered owner might be dead. Um, they may not exist anymore. They don't obviously care for the vehicle anymore because they've donated it to, to scrapyards. So when you go to register these things, the DMV and the, and the deputy registers are sending a letter to some previous registered owner from five, six, seven years ago, and they don't respond, so then you cannot Register the snowmobile. Um, so when you when you take a, a a used motor and you put it into a used body of a vehicle, how does does it get a new registration number or is that a dual registration um, number? It comes off Mr. the Hutchison. it comes off the serial number of the body. Okay. That is that is the the reg 
registered. This also happens when snowmobiles have been exchanged and they didn't transfer a title. The same thing happens. Uh, boats are done the same way. It's, it's current owner. The, the bill of sale is, is what allows the registration. And if that person falsifies it, then it's their responsibility. So when we say current owner, that's the person who claims to own it at this time. Okay, I'll send a question. So I know when, when, if I sell my vehicle um, to somebody else, in order for that person to get insurance on their vehicle, that registration, they have to have that registration card signed by the owner transferring the um, ownership. Do these vehicles have insurance and do they have to show um, purchase of insurance before they can use these vehicles? Mr. Hutchison. Insurance is optional. It's recommended, not required by law. I did and, not know that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Senator Lee. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, th I think I could add a, another example of this because it actually happened to me. Um, <laughs> and it was part of my gripe when, you, when we originally started talking about this. Um, first of all, there is there is no titles on on snowmobiles. They they don't actually have a title like a motor vehicle does. They're not registered in the same way it, uh, a motor vehicle is. Uh, largely, that's part of the reason they're kind of hard to to follow when they get stolen as well. Uh, but what happened was I bought one at an auction. The current owner was the the auction the auctioneer had it on, and it it was three owners prior was the last guy that had it registered because it's not required to be registered if you're driving on private land. Uh, that's the f situation I found myself in. It was, it was driven on private land. It was, it was never on the trails. It was never in the ditches. It, well, who knows? It might have been. But uh, the point of it was it was very hard to get that license. And if it wasn't at that point for a, a very nice lady working behind the counter, it probably never would have got registered. So uh, th this is a, a one-line fix to a, a pretty substantial problem when it comes to snowmobiles in the state of Minnesota. So right. I'll support it. Yes, and thank and you, Senator Lane. Just to clarify, Mr. Hutchison, um, motor off-road motorcycles and the amendment for ATVs is the same thing. All three of us are asking to have the word "current." Mm -hmm. That's part of the bill. Yes, uh, and just for some background, uh, those of you who serve in the Environment Committee last session, I think the Senator Lane and I uh, um, and Sen Senator uh, Jasinski did bring this bill forward then and was passed, but uh, I'm glad, you know, it, when you go to conference, I don't know what, what went wrong, but uh, <laughs> it's coming back, it's a good bill. And so, uh, any question from members before we give uh, Senator Jasinski final word? Yes, Senator Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, well, the good Senator from Faribault, um, did you, I, I noticed the other body has the same, as a, a companion bill, it, are they also moving the amendment that you moved here? Is that something they're doing as well or is that something they didn't do? Senator Sensky. Mr. Chair and Senator Hoffman, that is correct. Yes, they are moving the same amendment uh, to get them the same. And it, also while we're talking about that, we would like it uh, passed and, and require, or passed and recommended going to the floor. Uh, would our, be our prefer, preferential method to get this approved so we can get it on and get it into the air. DNR has to do their updates on their on the on the decals and everything. You got that rolling for the next next uh, season of snowmobiling cool. and recreational vehicles. Mr. Mr. Chair, Senator Hoffman, thank you, thank you, Senator Jasinski. And so you you want this to go right right to general orders, correct? Oh wow, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, um, um, Senator Jasinski, any uh, uh, final comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, in, in, don't know if you want to go into the details, but again, on a roundabout, uh, it was not allowed for them to cross properly. So what the third item of this bill does is allow the local road jurisdiction to deem a, a safe place to cross when you come to a roundabout, which you're seeing more and more of these days. So this just updates the language to address the roundabout issue. And if you, anybody members have any question on that, we can answer that. Any member on the tail end of the round? But okay. So if there's no uh, further questions, um, we'll move that uh, Senate file 31 as amended, recommend to pass, and it will be placed on the general order. Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed, nay. Okay. Motion prevail. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Um, next on the agenda is a Senate Senate File 420 from one of our member members, um, Senator House Chow. Senate File 420. Okay, uh, Senator House Chow, you have the committee. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Her and members of the Senate Environment, Climate, and Legacy Committee. Thank you for hearing Senate File 420, which is an all-terrain vehicle trail appropriation for the Prospector Loop ATV Trail and Voyager Co Country ATV Trail Systems, both located in my district in northeastern Minnesota. Um, I've had the opportunity to visit these ATV clubs at various rides and events that they have done, um, so I appreciate um, my constituents coming to, to testify on behalf of this bill. Um, ATV clubs across my district, including Prospector and Voyager, have been working closely with St. Louis, Lake, and Kuchiching counties and the newly formed Northeastern Regional ATV Joint Powers Board to develop a world-class ATV system. The overall vision for these clubs is to connect all the trails in northern Minnesota. The connected trail system will run from International Falls to the Iron Range and on to Grand Marais and on the north shore of Lake Superior. Over 1,500 miles of connected trails will be available and will allow users to spend a week in our region and never access the same trail twice. This will be one of the top trail experiences in the entire United States. These trail systems have a very positive economic impact on communities in northeastern Minnesota. Between the local ATV use along with the tourists coming from outside of our region, there are thousands of users throughout the year on these trails. These funds up for consideration will help connect all the regional trail systems which will allow users to visit numerous communities in northern Minnesota. Our area's existing resorts, businesses, and tourist attractions depend on this economic activity and these funds will be used to further develop these important trail systems. I have two of my constituents, as I mentioned, with me today to help describe the projects to you. Ron Potter of Ely is a member of the Prospect Prospector ATV Club and is also the president of ATV Minnesota. Bruce Bestie of Crane Lake is a member of the Voyager Club ATV Club. Mr. Chair, with your permission, I would like to ask Ron and Bruce to speak in more detail about these projects and how the appropriation from the ATV dedicated account will be used. Thank you. Okay. Um, to the testifier, please introduce yourself and... Uh Although Senator House Chair already mentioned your name, but just for the record, introduce yourself and then um, you may uh, speak. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, uh, members, my name is Ron Potter. I am the trail administrator for the Prospector Alliance. We are a nonprofit group made up of representatives from Ely, Babbitt, and Barris Tower in Lake County. The Prospector Loop has been in work for over nine years and it and now we have a goal of, of connecting the four communities together with this 250-mile trail system. Today we're working on, on connecting additional trails that will allow users to ride different areas without being required to load up and trailer to the next trail. Included in the handout it was a couple of those connections. The first is rebuilding a connection called the Cloquet Line on, up to the Echo Trail. It's a former railroad grade crossing the Range River. The second is the Bear Run Trail, which connects the David Dill State Trail to a network of existing forest roads and two resorts. I would add that we look to provide remote camping sites in the future, which was a vision of Representative Tommy Rukavina on, on this section of trail. Currently, we're working on an environmental assessment worksheet for these projects. We are partnering with the Department of Natural Resources on getting this document completed. The four projects will be reviewed by, have been reviewed by the, the DNR's tower office and recommended for funding by the ATV Minnesota State Organization. We've seen a major increase in the number of ATVs sold in the past couple of years as people use the trail for safe, outdoor, environmentally friendly activities for their families. I've mentioned our board has been working on this for nine years and we also have a growing member of volunteers, now well over 200 that can help maintain this trail in years to come. As a member of the ATV Minnesota Executive Board, we've been working to expand opportunities across the state. 
The prospector's projects are part of a statewide master plan that is currently being worked on by the state of Minnesota. Um, we support the request for the future of the opportunities in northeastern Minnesota. And this concludes my presentation. I will stand for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Potter. And uh, Mr. Betsy, uh, introduce yourself for the record, and you may speak. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, committee members. My name is Bruce Besty from Crane Lake, Minnesota. I'm excited to be here today. First, a little bit of good news is that we just finished up a five-mile trail enhancement um, that will connect up to, well, connect some of our trails, eliminating six miles of blacktop riding and eight miles of gravel riding. Uh, we've completed um, trail work, culverts, riprap, some of those things. Just on Wednesday, two new bridges appeared or will be installed late March. May 1, we'll be opening a new trail segment. That was funded with dedicated account dollars, so thank you very much in the past for that. But we want to continue to build out. Our system uh, is going to connect the communities of Cook all the way up to International Falls Little Fork and halfway across the Echo Trail east uh, towards Ely. On uh, this map that I provided, the light blue trails are our current core trail system that is open for riding. The darker blue are corridor roads, mainly county roads. The red trails are indicated there. Those are funded projects that we are currently working on in the next two years. Uh, those have all, the EAW, all that stuff has been done. So the green arrows, they reflect what we're our next step, phase two. Uh, the money that we're looking for is $750,000. $35,000 of that would go towards uh, the finalizing the alignments to Ray Little Fork, Eriksburg, and, and uh, International Falls. 125000 is the estimate to do a phase two EAW on those segments. And some of those alignments, like between Cavatogam and Ray, are already uh, pretty much finalized. So we want to be able to uh, do some construction uh, to get that Cooch County connection going. Also, there's some money there for us to do additional hydrology work on some a trail that crosses a couple of creeks. And then some um, uh, shelter areas, picnic tables, fire pit areas that create destinations for people to stop and ride. So that, I invite any questions. Thank you. Uh, yes, Senator Green. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And to the testifiers or the author of the bill, if you could help me understand this, um, unless I, I might have missed it, but uh, on, your, uh, on your handout, um, both requests are for 700000 but on the one with the big sheet here for uh, uh, Exhibit 2, Bear Run, it says the estimated cost is 556,700,000. 756,700, I should say. And, uh, and the other one is uh, 837,500. On the first one, um, this is the one you're asking now, uh, up to 750,000. Uh, can you explain the discrepancies there? Why, why it says it's only going to cost 556,000? Uh, Senator House Chow and members. Chair Herr and, and Senator Green, thank you for the question. I will uh, defer to Ron Potter for that question. Mr. Potter. Mr. Chair, Senator Green, committee members, the, the difference is, is that with the 700000 that we're asking for, we intend to match that with IRRB money. So that will give us our total amount that we need to build both of those projects. Senator Green. Mr. Chair, um, so what am I missing here? You, you're asking actually for uh, 1.45 million. Is this just one project? And the, and the other one is a separate project? Uh, Mr. Potter. Mr. Chair, Senator Green, um, this is, yeah, this is one project, 700,000 we're asking for, for the Prospector Trail System. The other request is for the Voyager Trail System, which is a separate trail system. They're asking for 750. 
With the 700,000, we would match this with IRRRB money and give us what we need to build both of these trails on this map. Okay, I, th I think I've got it, Mr. Chair. Then the other thing, the other last question is, it uh, at, at the bottom of uh, each paragraph, it says that the appropriation may be used as a local match to a 2023 state bonding award. Uh, you are seeking bonding for this as well? Uh, Senator House Chow. Uh, thank you, Chair. Her, Senator Green, uh, it is possible that we could seek bonding for, for these projects, um, but we'll sort of determine that. I believe... The language, correct me if I'm wrong, if council might know, but from my understanding, that language might be standard in case we were to try to go for bonding. Senator Green, any follow-up? Th thank you. Just one more question. It's the bonding's not needed right now. You have, you, with, your, with your local match and the ATV money, you have the money to do this? Because just, just to be clear, you know, the ATV money, for those who don't know, maybe you could explain where that money comes from. Senator House Chow. Thank you, Chair Her. Senator Green, thank you for the question. Um, I will, uh, I don't know if you want to answer that, uh, sure. Sure. Mr. Potter, or I, okay, go ahead. Mr. Potter. Mr. Chair, Senator Green, committee, the funding for the ATV dedicated account comes from the ATV registration and a percentage of the unrefunded state gas tax that goes in to build that up, build that account. Um, and we, in, in, this, in this project, we have four connections that we're working on, but we're only seeking funding for two of them here from the dedicated account. There is another section um, that's part of the EAW that um, we'll be using part of this, the David Dill State Trail. And if we go after bonding, that would be used on that state trail portion, not on either one of these. Any okay. Senator? Thank you. Just, just, to, just to follow up, then I did know where where the money comes from. I just wanted to make sure some of the new members did that. It's not it's not coming out of the general fund. It's no. it's something that actually the Stonebuilders asked to uh, to pay, so they would have money for their trails, if I'm not mistaken. But I I do have a little heartburn over the bonding. I don't think that this is a good place for bonding, but uh, we'll see as it moves forward. Senator Leesumber. Do you have a question? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, maybe this could clarify a little further. I'm going to have um, uh, Mr. Dan Mueller to talk about the fiscal note of this bill. Um, Mr. Chairman and members, I just want to quickly go over the, the ATV account that was um, talked about. Uh, currently, the ATV account has about a $6 million uh, fund balance. And... Um, the, the funds going into the account are made up of it's about $7.2 million of, reg, of registration fees. There's about $2 million per year of the gas tax that was mentioned. And then there's about another $200,000 of other fees that go into it, usually from like training classes and things like that. So that makes up about $9.4 million per year going in. And the current expenditures ongoing is about nine million. So there's about an extra four hundred million dollars or four hundred thousand per year that's unspent in the account. And they already had a balance of, you know, close to six million of that before then. So this is the bill calls for just one time money. So that would just bring down that fund balance down to, you know, between four and a half and five million dollars still remaining in the account. So it wouldn't affect the ongoing um, operations of what is paid for out of that account ongoing. This would just use up some of the balance. So, member, any questions uh, for Mr. Miller or uh, Senator House Child regarding this bill? Okay, looks like we're gonna move this bill forward. Um, Senator Hoffman, do you wanna move this, uh, this, this bill? Oh. Lay over. Okay. Well, member, uh, seeing no no discussion, Senate File 193 will be laid over for further consideration. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, nay. All right. Uh, motion prevail. It will be laid over. Okay. Thank you, Senator Hoff. Ciao. Ch um, all right. We're.
moving very, pretty quickly, and so we're ahead of time by an hour and a half. So enjoy your evening, um, that time of day. And uh, Good Eatery is also located in Eastside St. Paul, if you don't mind, I'm promoting my district. Now, uh, motion to adjourn, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? All right, so uh, the Committee of Environment, Climate, and Legacy is now adjourned. Thank you.